Welcome back to the channel. Chelsea are playing Nottingham Forest this Saturday in the 5.30 kickoff, and it's a massive game. Some people might think Chelsea, Nottingham Forest, what? The only thing that, that is massive about that game is the European Cups that both sides have won. But look, actually, in terms of this season, both sides haven't really achieved what they probably set out to do. Don't forget how much money Nottingham Forest has spent on their side. I was looking through it previewing this. They've got some serious players. Like, their actual squad depth of the level of player is really good. And if you look at Chelsea, definitely don't forget how much money they've spent. And where they are in the league probably isn't good enough. And both teams are actually still fighting for something as well. This Nottingham Forest side, <clears throat> we're on 29 points. And they can survive before this game even kicks off if results go their way. But realistically, they need to make sure they go and win and make sure that's done. Right? And, and focus on winning the game. They're not going to be preparing, hoping that other teams don't win. Because... Burnley and Luton are still fighting for their lives as well. So, look, Forrest have got it all to do. 29 points with two games to go is not a good position in the Premier League. The notorious safety point is 40. So, and, and probably about this time last year, Chelsea was still fighting for 40 points. So, there's an argument there to suggest that Chelsea have improved and moved forward because that isn't the case this time round. Chelsea are chasing down 6th, 7th place maybe fifth if we're extremely lucky but realistically there's a chance and a real outside chance that Chelsea could somehow still get a place in Europa League football if not hopefully we secure a place in Conference League football which would be amazing considering how weirdly wrong our season's kind of gone in the in the opinion of many however in recent weeks We've kind of just managed to keep hanging on. And, and if we look at Chelsea's form in recent weeks, well, look, we lost 5-0 to Arsenal, but we've scored 13 goals other than that and kept three clean sheets in a row at home. It's really not that bad. And even against Aston Villa, we drew two all. And that's a team who are fighting for Champions League. And albeit, yeah, they got turned over by, by Brighton. Chelsea probably could have gone and won that game in the second half. So... There's definitely been positives, and I'm hearing people that have been solidly potch out all season now changing their mind, saying he should stay. And I'm seeing people convinced that after two and a half games, we've finally found the way we should be playing and the squad that should be playing and the players who are willing to put everything into this club and make something happen and fight for Europe. I can't disagree with a lot of the points being raised. I think people just need to remember as Chelsea fans that realistically this season's a lot longer than two and a half games and there have been some real real errors there have been embarrassing humbling defeats there have been times when Chelsea have been way way off it not the Chelsea we know at all and we have to remember to maintain our standards and the fact that Chelsea are fighting for Conference League and Europa League is way below where Chelsea should be as a club and let me remind you that before Clear Lake Capital came in we were fighting for third, second place, and many, many competitions. Look, it's been a tipsy-turvy season, and or topsy-turvy season, and honestly, the fact that we are in the position that we are, going into this game against Nottingham Forest, is frankly quite surprising to me, because it felt that we were never going to get away from mid-table, and somehow we've done that. This game against Nottingham Forest is massive, whether you like it or not, and They've had a couple of players performing well for them all season. When I look through their squad, like I said, it's a ridiculously strong team for where they are in the league, I think. And it kind of reminds me of when Fulham spent about £100 million and got relegated as well. They, they equipped their team with a lot of similar level players and they kind of struggled and then obviously got relegated. Nottingham Forest, the last season scraped through, looks like they're potentially going to do the same again. I expected them to probably finish a little bit higher than fighting relegation into the last two games of the season. They've not been on the best run recently. They've lost three of their last five. They've won one against Sheffield United, which we saw Callum Hudson-Odoi get a brace. They look really good. Nuno's using him well. He obviously is performing for them better than he did on his recent loan spell out in Germany and his last few years at Chelsea weren't too great. So it's nice to see Callum Hudson-Odoi sort of finding his way again after such a horrific injury and one that I think has changed him as a player, probably mentally and physically. Um, 
They've lost to Tottenham, Everton and Manchester City in their last five games. They've also drawn two all with Wolves. So their only real win was against an already relegated Sheffield United side. However, did look pretty convincing. They're going to be fighting. Make no mistake about that. And to be honest with you, I, I'm kind of expecting to see a three at the back system. We'll bring it up. This is kind of what I think Forrest are going to be going forwards with. Um... I would say the real weakness in this side, if I'm looking at it, is probably Montiel on the right wing back side of things. It's more than likely they'll play with a three. I've seen some Forest fans suggesting they should go to a back four. I've seen Forest fans saying that Ola Aina should be playing instead of Montiel on the right, an ex Chelsea guy as well. And on the left, they should be bringing in uh, Tofolo. Um, obviously, had a bit of Premier League experience, I think, with Huddersfield as well. So, look, they've got. Some good players there. If you look at that team, Murillo jumps out to me. I think that's a guy who's been a really, really good centre-back this season. I feel like he's one or two games away from scoring a Weldy. If not, it'll be sometime next season if they don't sell him. Because I think he's had a really good season. I think there's a couple of other names there that jump out to me. I think Yates scored an unbelievable goal as well recently. Gibbs White is an exceptional talent. He's been so, so good. For me... He's way above Nottingham Forest level. And to be honest, he's kind of one of those that's... He's not gone under the radar, but the fact that he didn't get bought and Brennan Johnson did is kind of crazy to me because I feel like he's the standout player in this side. And I think realistically, he will be moving in the summer whether they stay up or not. He's definitely one to watch for me as well. hudson Adoy has obviously been in fantastic form and Chris Wood, the journeyman of journeymen, has been in okay form this season, considering all things considered when it comes to Chris Wood. He, he's not an exceptional striker, but he can definitely do a job for you. I really like a one year. They've got a couple of injuries as well. I think actually maybe only one now in terms of um, Nico Williams, the right back, who has really impressed me at times this season as well. And I think that's why they're worried about Montiel playing at right back, because I think there's, there's a definite difference between Nico and Montiel. So look, that's the team, that's Forest team. They've got everything to play for. It's going to be a difficult game for Chelsea, no matter what. Going away hasn't been the easiest thing for us this season. Going against teams like Nottingham Forest have proven tricky. Back in September when we played them, Anthony Alanga scored another guy they've got they could potentially bring off the bench. And we were pretty woeful that day. We missed a couple of sitters. I remember Sterling missing a chance. I remember Jackson putting one over the bar when the goal was pretty much open. I remember Conor Gallagher and Casado getting messed up in midfield that led to the the Langa goal. It, it was a team that didn't look like they had any cohesion. They, they hadn't played together much. Poch was chopping and changing. It wasn't, it wasn't a good game for Chelsea, let's be real. And unfortunately, this season, that's where we've struggled. But in recent weeks, moving on to our team, Pochettino has found structure. So if we look at our team, I'm pretty much going with the same lineup. I think there's no reason to change. Poch has found something that's working. And for me, that's one of the most important things. It doesn't really matter who's playing in terms of name. But if you're getting results, that's there's something is working. Maybe a couple of tweaks here and there, which we've seen, haven't we? Trevor chalaber has been at right back against Villa. Then he went to centre back and then he's gone back to right back. But the way Kukure is inverting, sometimes it looks like a back three. And I think Trev really suits that system. I think Badashine looks better in a back three than he's done in a back four for Chelsea. And I think Thiago Silva is bringing a much, much needed experience to this team. And it will be sad to see that not there next season, obviously. That's why it's a must that we do something about it. But however, going into this game, I believe it's absolutely essential because relegation dogfights that Forrest are in can be difficult ones to navigate. They can be nasty. They can be brutal games of football. And this is a side, this Chelsea team, that when push come to shove, we failed arguably against these sort of teams that can bully us physically, that can sit back and grind out one counter-attacking opportunity and score and win the game. We can then capitulate after that. This is a real test for me because obviously they've already beaten us this season. They know how to do it. And ultimately, we weren't that great and we haven't been great against these sort of teams. 
What I saw against Everton, though, who I'd put in a similar bracket, is a positive I'm trying to take into this game. It really is. If we can carry on the type of form that we're going into this game with, play similar football, hope that the Kukurea tactic hasn't been found out, because I feel like with the pace that Nottingham Forest have, that sort of gap that Kukurea has been leaving could be exposed sooner rather than later by someone with a lot of pace. And ultimately, someone like Alanga is that sort of player. Not sure whether he'll play, like I said. Um, but that's the sort of player that I think could really expose that. Callum Hudson-Odoi, maybe. Maybe he's, pay he's still deceptively fast. I'm not sure. That's what I'd worry about, especially if they've got a wing-back situation. It kind of might create a bit of an overload on, on that side where Kukurea is. It'll be interesting to see. We're not sure how it's going to pan out. It's just food for thought. That's the one thing I'd say about the inverted role that Kukurea has picked up is, at times, has it looked slightly worrying? The space that's kind of there for Badashile to occupy on his own whilst Kukurea tries to get back a little bit. That's why it's so important that Conor Gallagher is allowed to get back in and try and win the ball up high, which is what I expect him to do again for this game. I expect Cole Palmer to be absolutely on it after the awards that he's won this week. He's obviously won um, Chelsea's Players Player of the Year, Chelsea's Fans Player of the Year. He's also just won Player of the Month for the Premier League as well. The accolades are coming now. It's been a fantastic season. May the goals keep coming. He's obviously still pushing for the golden boot, but... Haaland's performance the other day absolutely probably wrapped that up for him. But you never know. You never know. Um, let's look at the front three, shall we? I think Jackson's been really, really good in recent weeks. I think he's my player to watch for Chelsea. He's on 13 Premier League goals this season, which is better than I expected. I said 10. 13's obviously above that. Those three goals are probably from that Tottenham game, where it was a bit of a stat padding earlier on, but it's still three goals. He wants 15. I'm backing him to do it. Why not? If he turns up against Forrest and he causes a bit of havoc, he, he could get his 15 goals. He really could. I think madoweki has been really strong recently. I don't want to see him out of the team. And the only player that, that is a little bit controversial for me here is Mudrick. I feel like Mudrick's it's getting to the point where I'm not seeing enough from Mudrick to warrant him keep playing. Now, what's the deal here? Is Sterling injured? Is he completely not fit? Is he unable to play? Is Poch trying to rest him? Uh, look, I don't know what's happening with Sterling here, but but something obviously is. Has he fallen out with Poch? I, I just don't know. I don't want to speculate, but Sterling actually caused problems for Forrest, albeit didn't score in the last game we played against him. He was the person that was trying to make something happen. He was getting into the box, getting on the end of chances, trying to put in crosses. And I feel like that's something Sterling's done all season for Chelsea. It's just the quality that's been there hasn't always been up to the level we expect of a player on the wage packet that he's on and the reputation that he has. Worryingly for me, though, Mudrick isn't doing much either. And I feel like if you look at this team, although we found a bit of balance... I think that's the weakest part of Chelsea's team right now. And defensively, what I saw in the last game against West Ham from Mudrick, it wasn't really good enough for me. I feel like he didn't track back enough. And when he got on the ball, it was okay. He worked a couple of opportunities, but I'm just not seeing enough from him. And I'm kind of hoping it clicks. I've said this so many times with Mudrick. But right now, if Sterling was to play there or someone else was to come in and, and be tried there, although not Chilwell, let me say, I'd rather have Mudrick's pace as a threat to occupy their defenders than have Chilwell there. I must say that. I'm kind of intrigued to see what happens, although I'm not even sure if Chile's fit. So um, I never know with Chile. There's obviously rumours that Reese James is back in training as well and Potcher said in his press conference he could play a couple of minutes if he if he's fit. I'm not sure it's worth it, to be honest with you. If we really need Reese, why not? But look, they must win games up until the end of the season. Hence why I can see Potches want to use Reese. But we all know Reese's injury record. It's not worth the risk. We saw Nkunku obviously come on the other day. Who knows? For me, I started thinking to myself, maybe we put Nkunku on the left. Maybe he tries Jackson on the left and Nkunku up top. But Jackson's been in good form up front. People keep telling me, oh, he's a winger, he's a winger. 
look, Jackson's been in good form up front recently. And I genuinely think I'm starting to see better performances of Jackson up front than I'm seeing from him as a winger. So I'm not sure I want to see that change either. And I don't want to see too many tweaks that throws the balance off, which I think we've done a lot this season, whether that's been through poch, meddling or injuries. We finally got a bit of balance. And I think the players are starting to look on the pitch like they know who's around them in certain areas. If they're playing the ball out to the right, they know where Nonny's going to be. If they're playing the ball out to the left, they kind of know where Mudrick's going to be if he knows where he is. Um, the same with Cole Palmer. I think it's instrumental that he's aware of who's around him and the types of runs they're making because that allows him to be even more creative. And we're definitely seeing that. The same with Casado. Players are starting to trust giving him the ball a little bit more because they're seeing the type of player that he is. So it's gelling. So that's why I don't want too many tweaks. We've had a long enough rest since the West Ham game. It's a massive game for Chelsea. Look, I'm not sure how this game goes. Like I wasn't against West Ham, because more, more times than not this season, Pochettino has changed things when he didn't need to. And I've been surprised, and ultimately I felt that's cost us the game. Don't forget Everton, we won 6-0. The next week... He changed the tactic against City, a very tired City team in the semi-final, and we basically didn't turn up. Then he reverts back to this tactic, and all of a sudden we've started winning games again. It, it kind of baffles me, because who knows what could have been if the meddling hadn't happened, if the injuries hadn't happened, we might be looking at Champions League football. But look, it's a learning curve. We've kind of said that already. We said that very early on, which is what I'm trying to remind myself as well. Massive game for Chelsea going into this one. We have to win, have to keep the pressure on. Although United are fumbling it, Tottenham are fumbling it. You just don't know that because of the points they've got, Tottenham, they're probably not going to fall, even if they, they, do, they could just get one win. Newcastle United are the team for me that are in the best form going forwards in, in this battle for like Europa League, Conference League. Chelsea is second in that at the moment. And we just need to keep the momentum up and keep winning games. Because five wins to end the season would be fantastic as well. Because good form at the end of the season normally means you start pretty well as well. So fingers crossed we can do that. But it's one game at a time. It's three cup finals. And we all know how our record's been in cup finals in recent years. So fingers crossed we can get the job done. Let me know your thoughts on the team. Do you want to see any changes? Would you like to see Nkunku start? Don't forget, this is our star man this is the guy we bought in for a lot a lot of money he got a few minutes throughout the whole season really if we're being honest he's not played that much at all is it time that he carries us to Europa League football what a step up that would be um could see the return of some other big names as well like I said let me know thoughts in the comments down below what do you think the score is going to be can Chelsea do it can we get Europa League football make sure to like the video if you're enjoying the content and subscribe because we are on the road to 2,500 subscribers and the support has been phenomenal recently. I'm welcoming in everyone who's joining the community and I want to chat to you guys in the comments and all the other socials. So let's see what happens. I'm going to be at the game. Who knows? Maybe I'll chuck a vlog up as well. That'd be good fun. And I will see you afterwards for all the reaction in a bit.